can start off with arithmetic sequences, right? And then we're going to move on to quadratic sequences. And I'll explain exactly what these are and what it is that I want to present to you today. Because um, I believe the current method shown uh, in terms of how to solve quadratic sequences is just, is just not efficient. Um, I have found something a lot, lot simpler and easier to understand. And I want to show you the way in which it works. And the reason I want to show you the way in which it works is because I believe it. I, there's no point in me just teaching you something and say, stick this in a formula and solve it. Um, there, it's much, much easier if you understand what's going on. You know, So I, I think that's what we're going to do. So let's start off with some arithmetic sequences. So this may be a sequence, for example, like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Now, you may be able to tell me the next term. You may say to me, ah, I see. All right, we're adding 1 each time. I mean, a 2 each time, sorry. So you say add 2, add 2. Add two, add two. And if we do that again, well, the next term in the sequence is going to be 11. But remember that problem I told you, I told you about earlier? Well, maybe that this is the start of some numbers to a different sequence. So we can never know what uh, this actual, what the next number in the sequence is unless we're told the type of sequence it is. And in the case of arithmetic sequences, the rules are that every time you add the same amount. So if we're adding two here, we're going to add two again and add two again and add two again. So it's actually, uh, because I've told you what type of sequence it is, if I have an arithmetic sequence, let's say I say the first two numbers are five and then eight. The nature of the arithmetic sequence means that you know all the rest of the terms in the sequence because it's, the sequence works in, a, in, a, in the same way each time. So if this is add three, then because it's an arithmetic sequence, the next thing that you must do is add three because you have to add the same number each time. That is why it's called an arithmetic sequence. That's one way or one kind of category of sequences. And they're... Relatively simple. Now, uh, remember I said uh, that we can't figure out what a sequence is uh, based on the first few numbers in the sequence. Well, there's a, there's a solution. This is the solution. And there's a solution to this, which is shown at GCSE. Again, they don't explain why why this is necessarily useful. But I, I believe, or at least, you know, um, in my head, I say it's because if I use this, uh, use this technique, I can actually identify a sequence and then uh, I can have a unique way of expressing each individual sequence specifically. So I'll explain what I mean by that. So let's just take out 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Now, you may or may not have heard of the nth term rule. So the nth term rule is something which helps you to identify uh, what a sequence is, find out any term in that sequence almost instantly, and if I give you a number in that sequence, you can tell me uh, which number term that is. So, for example, let's firstly start off with uh, with me explaining what I mean by which term it is. Well, this term, which is one, which is the first term, we're going to call it the first term. This is going to be the second term. This is the third term. This is the fourth term. This is the fifth term. All very logical, right? All makes a bunch of sense. Um, but we want to be able to relate the place that a number is in the sequence to what the number actually is itself. So I'll tell you what the nth term is for this sequence to begin with, and we'll see how it matches up. So the, the nth term here is 2n minus 1. Right, now what does this mean? Well, I'm, if I'm going to say the nth term, right, I'm going to write it as an equation, the nth term equals 2n minus 1. What does that mean for my sequence? Well, if I was to replace n with 1, what would happen to this equation? Let's see. So it would be the 1, and then instead of saying you know, one and then uh, the one th term, that doesn't make any sense. The first term is what we're going to say, of course, right? So we're going to say the first term equals, and replacing the n with one, because of course n is one, uh, we have two uh, times one minus one, which is just two minus one, which is one. Okay, well, what if n equals two? Let's see what happens. If n is two, then we're going to say the second term is equal to two, and then replacing n with two here. So it's going to be two times two minus one, which is four minus one, which is three. Now, what you notice is I've just said the first term is 1 and the second term is 3. And what you see is this is the same as this sequence here. So actually, what's happened is this uh, nth term rule here is a way to uniquely identify this sequence. Now, of course, this isn't a proof that this is the right uh, nth term. I've just shown you that two of the values work. Now, I can, I can make up a different formula, and the first two values will be 1 and 3, but maybe the sequence goes off differently. But you can believe me for now. Right, I'll show you. I'll show you how this work works after. But this is this is how we're going to start. So this is what an nth term is, and what happens is when you replace any number uh, for n, you can find out whatever the number of n is 
what that term in the sequence actually is. So if I said, okay, a question was, well, I know what the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth term is, but you know, I want to know what the hundredth term is. There's some reason as to why I want to know the hundredth term. Not a problem. What I do is I replace n with a hundred. So then based on this formula, the hundredth term is two times a hundred minus one, which is 200 minus one, which is 199. And all of a sudden, I actually know what the hundredth term is. And that's really useful. So that's a reason for using the nth term. Equally though, what if I said to you, I know that the term 387 is in the sequence, but I don't know what term it is. Well, notice what we can do here. We can say, well, the nth term equals 2n minus 1, right? Now, this nth term is 387. That's what we're trying to find out. So we can say to ourselves, 2n minus 1 equals 387. So then 2n equals 388. So then if we divide both sides by 2, we get n equals 194. What does that mean? Well, that means that it's the 194th term in the sequence. So this is another reason why you, having this nth term rule is so useful. It's this solution to trying to identify exactly what the sequence is. So um, if you remember, we started off with the sequences 1, 2, 4, and then it could have been either 7 is the next number or 8 is the next number. That is That sequence right there, or both of those sequences right there, fit into uh, other categories of sequences, not arithmetic sequences. So I'll just show you those again. So 1, 2, 4, and then either we can have 7 or we can have 8 depending on what the type of sequence is. So one type of sequence could be plus one, plus two, and then plus three. That's a quadratic type of sequence. And then this is times two, times two, and times two. Again, that's a different type of sequence, which actually you don't need to worry about uh, just yet uh, for GCSE, but we'll go into it anyways, uh, because I think that it's very interesting and not too difficult. Right, so uh, let's, let's carry on with this arithmetic sequence business and think about how we find out the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So. What we do, I'll show you the method, and then I may even show you how it works. So we have an arithmetic sequence like that. Um, and the first term, let's say, is 5. The second term is 9. And then we have 13. And then we have 17. Now, there's a rule I like to use, which is, uh, firstly, we're going to think about what the term before the 5 would be. So this 5 better be the first term, and this better be the second term, etc. Right, so we're going to think about the zeroth term. Is. I like to call it the zeroth term, right? So let's think about what's going on here. Well, from 5 to 9, we're adding 4. From 9 to 13, we're adding 4. So logically speaking, something, which was a zeroth term, plus 4 is 5. So uh, I hope you can see that the zeroth term must be 1, right? So this must be 1 because we're adding 4 each time. So we have this 1, so we're going to keep this 1. Cool. And then we're going to say add. And then what's this difference every time? What's the common difference? We call this... We call this plus 4 the common difference. Well, this is the common difference. So we're going to have plus 4 in brackets, which is our common difference, times n. And that is your nth term. So what is our nth term? Let's think about this. So it's 1 plus, uh, and then plus 4 times n. So 1 plus uh, 4n, or 4n plus 1, however you want to write it. So we can say the nth term of this sequence is 4n plus 1. And we can try it out. Let's try it out just for the first term. Right? So if we say n equals 1, so then the first term is 4 times 1, add 1, which is 4, add 1, which is 5. And that checks out over here. Perfect. So this is how we're going to figure out the nth term. Now, how does this work? You can say, how does this work? Well, how, how does this method uh, come to be correct? Well, I'll show you. So uh, let's take a very general sequence. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. This is something which I expect, you know, if you're uh, starting your A-levels, you may, may understand kind of some of the notation here. Um, so let's think about uh, arithmetic sequences, uh, but let's label things very generally. So U1 is going to refer to the first term. And similarly, UN is going to refer to the nth term. So the number, which is in the subscript of this U, is going to be the number of the terms. So uh, a sequence, an arithmetic sequence in general, right? let's talk about arithmetic sequence in general, is going to be u1, u2, u3, u4, dot, dot, dot. Well, all I've written there is that we're going to have the first term first, then the second term, then the third term, and the fourth term. Great. So that's just how sequences work, right? They just come one after another. Now, how are we going to figure out what the nth term is? Well, uh, let's think about how arithmetic sequences work. Well, what happens is we add or subtract a common, a common number here. So we're going to say we add this d for difference. 
Um, and we do that every single time, right? So let's think about what we know about uh, the term to term rule, right? So if we say u1 add d equals u2, okay, that's pretty good. Now let's think about what un is. Well, uh, un is here, let's say. So, okay, so if we're trying to find out what un is in terms of u1, right? So let's think about it, un in terms of u1, right? So if it's u2, it's u1 plus d. If it's u3, right, it's going to be u1 plus d, and then plus d again. So it's u1 plus 2d, because notice we're doing plus d, and then we're doing plus, two, plus d again, so we go from u1 to u3. And then notice, if we want to go to u4, we've got to add d again, so it'd be u1 plus 3d equals u4. Right, so can we notice a little pattern here? Right. Can we notice a little pattern here? Well, the pattern I see is that u1 plus, and then let's let's think about uh, un right here. So if we have the number 2 here, we have 1d. If we have the number 3 here, we have 2d. If we have the number 4 here, we have 3d. So it always seems to be 1 less than this number here. So if we have un here, it's going to be n minus 1 times d. So it's going to be whatever this number is, take away 1, and that number of d is. Because look at this here. So u1 plus 1d equals u2. So there's 2 here, 1 here, 3 here, 2 here, 4 here, and 3 here. So that makes a bunch of sense. So this is actually uh, something we can find out. But then I like to take it a step further and say, well, what about u0? Well, let's try and think about what u0 is. Well, u0 plus d equals u1, as we can see from this here, u0 plus d equals u1. Right, so let's replace this uh, expression for u1 into this formula over here. So if u1 is equal to u, uh, u0 plus d, then u0 plus d plus n minus 1 times d equals un. Or in other words, u0 plus, sorry, let me just uh, undo that, plus, and then if you've got n minus 1d plus 1d, right, so I'll, I'll write that out, n minus 1 plus 1 times d equals un. Uh, we have u0 plus, and then notice that n minus 1 plus 1 is just n, so we have plus n d equals un. And compare that to the four, you can compare that to what I told you to do. Well, what, what, what do I actually mean by u1 plus n d? What that actually means is the zeroth term, because notice this number here tells you what term in the sequence you're on, plus, and then n times d. So uh, n is just n, right? That n is just going to stay, and d is this common difference. Right, and so it's uh, co the common difference times n, right, and that equals the nth term. Now let's look at what I told us to do here. Uh, well, I said let's look at the zeroth term here, right, and then I said what's the common difference? So if you notice, this is u zero, and then this common difference here, this plus four is a d times the n. So we had u zero plus n uh, d n, and I said this was equal to the nth term, which is u n. So u zero plus d n equals u n, and here you see we have the exact same equation. Right, so that's how it works. Now, of course, you don't need to worry about it, how it works too much, right? If you can understand some bits of it and not other bits of it, that's completely fine. But it's just there for you to really, you know, if you want to, if you just want to, just want to know how it works, you can run through this again. You can rewatch this and and try and follow it more again and again. Uh, if you if it's just a nice insight, you can just you know listen listen to this once and and leave it there. But it's just so it's not just uh, like you're being lectured and said, do this, do this, do this. Uh, that's how you do it, and then you never get told, told why it works. Because to me, there's no point in that, right? Uh, I'm always curious about how things work. So I hope that if, if, if that interests you, that that was helpful. Now